before you this morning, as humbly as we know how. Yeah. Just thanking you for yeah. allowing us to see the light of another day. We just thank you right now for life, health, and strength, Father God. We just thank you for all the many blessings that you bestowed us through. And just to get to this point in time, we just pray right now, Father God, that your spirit reigns throughout this service, Father God. We just pray right now, boldly, that you touch us, Father God, in a special way as this service goes forth. Be with us, Father God. God is Father God. Give us whatever motivation we need. Because it's all up to you and your grace and your mercy yeah. as to why we are here right now. Yeah. So we just give you all the glory and all the honor Father God, for just allowing us to come before you once again. Well, in the mighty and righteous name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. We will now have a musical selection by Dr. Floyd. Welcome. After that, a welcome you will be by our own pastor. What do y'all say for this time?
uh, to our Lord and Savior Jesus, who we know as the Christ, to uh, my brothers and sisters in person, and to those who come to us via social media, we say to all of this glorious good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So good to be in the house of the Lord. Just. At this time, uh, if there are any visitors among us who wants to stand, uh, you can. Amen. Amen. And you can. Amen. And you can stand. You can have a word. Amen. Amen. Come on, mother. Bless you. Bless you, sweetie. Amen. 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 Amen.
good, kind, and warm to one another. We do, we do want to acknowledge our guests, amen. Uh, first and foremost, I have Dr. Harris here from the Bethel Hill International. So, so glad to have you, amen, amen. She is actually uh, the mother of uh, Miss C. Shefton, amen. Sister C. Shefton here, amen. 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 Is our, yeah, yes, we give her hand. She's actually uh, our student for the summer, amen. And she continued to grow uh, uh, in the Lord's work, amen. And so she's in, I would say, the final chapter. She down to the last few pages, amen. 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 from her uh, today, amen, as well as uh, from myself, amen, it is our Men's and Women's Day, but before I move on, I do want to also acknowledge uh, Sister Yvonne <coughs> Sheft and her sister-in-law, <laughs> our social media it is our Men's and Women's Day, our theme is uh, Anchor in Hope, all right, taken from <laughs> Hebrews 16 and 9. The certain hope of being what saved, amen, amen. And so to God be the glory. Uh, uh, so listen, throughout this summer, right, uh, at least once a month, and I'm going to say once a month on the second Sunday, uh, we want to bring you a message around that theme. Come on and let and allow uh, Sister Nikita to come on in, amen. Come on, thank you for being with us this morning, Sister Nikita. Amen, amen, amen. 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 We had uh, just a wonderful and we had it all, amen. Good music, good food, good fellowship, amen, amen. And so to God be the glory for that. And so thank you all who came or who supported us, even with your prayers. Thank you. Look for that at least uh, one Friday a month. A month. And you want to come on out. You want to come on out and just be blessed, amen. And so to God be the glory for that. Now listen, this is also gun violence awareness. Yes. Amen. And so uh, throughout this month, uh, not only will we be doing work uh, in our community and moving forward, but we do want to uh, bring you firsthand um, stories, I should say, of how gun violence has affected us in this community. And one of the stories uh, today that we'll be uh, addressed with uh, comes internally, amen, from our beloved sister, uh, Verdell Boy, amen. She's sitting here with us today. Uh, come on up, Sister Verdell. Let me ask you. All right, come on up. We'll do her story. Tyrone, let's see if we can uh, check, check, check. Give me this other oh, show. Sure. Check, check. <laughs> good morning, good morning, good morning. Praise the Lord, everybody. Okay. My name is Virgil Moses Boy. Most of y'all know me as Marie's sister. But I'm more than just Marie's sister. All right. I'm Amen. a mother. Amen. I'm a wife. Yeah. I have four children of my own, and I have 15 grands. And Hallelujah. I have, uh, one great grand. All right. All right. But my story goes back to, um, I think it was back in 19, no, not 19. Uh, 20, it might have been 20, 2010. 2010. My son got shot nine times. Jesus. And I used to live right across the street in front of this building right here on Huntington Street. But I was living in West Virginia. And I got a call that my son had got shot. So I was walking in uh, West Virginia. Living in West Virginia, but I was working for Macy's. Mm. So I got the phone call when I was at Macy's, and I told him I had to leave and go see about my son. But thank God, the nine bullets mm. that came through the driver hit him, but the driver died. Mm. 
Jesus, Jesus. So, my tragedy is, I left, I was left Newark back in 2003. And during this time, that's all I heard was gun violence, kids being shot, innocent bystanders. And it just, it hurted me. So when I came back to Newark, I said I had to do something. Amen. To hear other people's stories, not only my story, but other people's stories. So again, I used to live across the street in 24200 Street, and I always didn't go to church. I belonged belong to a church, but I didn't always go That's there. The and then when I went there, I'm going to tell you the truth, I was half high. But I still kept going. Come on, man. I, my sister whispered in my ear one day. She saw me on the street. I was and she whispered in my ear. She said, if you don't get yourself together, you'll never see them kids again. That Monday morning, I was in a rehab. I And I stayed in there for 21 days. And it was the best 20 days of my life. Because now I can stand here and talk about it. Who I am and what I did back then. Amen. Amen. And I also work at uh, St. Michael's Hospital. And I am also HIV positive. Do I look like I'm HIV? No. No. That's all. But I need to share this because a lot of people don't want to tell. Oh, yeah, that's all right. Amen. That's not who I am. I don't let that HIV control me. Amen. I just wanted to share that tell you about me as a person. Yeah. Because I came to this church, y'all gave me love and you're still showing me love. Yeah. All right. so that's just a little bit of my story and I've been clean since I've been uh, since 1987. Yeah. 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 I was HIV positive in 1995 and I married in 1996. Oh, I was afraid to tell him what I was, and guess what? He took me to a, a restaurant and bought me some food, and all he did was drink some coffee. And when it was time of the day to pay the bill, he said, I only got $20. I did that. All right. You know, God is good. going to hear the, the, this poem on the 25th mm. and it says am I my sister's keeper? Mm. I want you to think about that. Yeah. But sometimes you know we want to be someone's keeper yeah. but it don't always really work out that way. Because right. right. everybody can't, everybody should be well, a keeper well, uh -huh. but it yeah. takes work. Yeah. Yeah. So am I my sister's keeper? Amen. 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 This is a place of overcomers, amen. Amen. If you got something on your jacket, amen, you're in the right place, amen. Amen, amen. We are thankful to be in God's uh, hospital, amen. We're on our way to our healing and our restoration, amen. So to God be glory. Sister Burdell, thank you for being selfless. Yes. Uh, story. Uh, come on up again. We got, listen, I want these three ladies on this Men's Women's Day. We want to honor, uh, first and foremost, uh, uh, Sister Eloise. It's her birthday today. Yes. 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 Amen. 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 And then our last 
guys. Uh, uh, Ella is here this morning. Sister Erdine. Amen. So you are allowed to go up. We just don't go down. Amen. Amen. God ought to say amen to that. Amen. Ain't nothing else you're going to going down. Your groceries going up. Amen. Your mechanic going up. That car bill, but if you went and put that lease down, he went up. Amen. Ain't nobody going down. So we're not going to go down for the Lord unless we're going down on our knees to give him some thanks. Amen. So to God be the glory. I was told it was uh, one fifty, so I had to, Amen. I had to go under the mattress and find me fifty more dollars. Amen. Uh, but it was under there, so I gave all the credit to the Lord. Amen. 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 To God be the glory. Here we go, sweetie. Here we go. So listen, it's our. Uh, it's time for our offering. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise as we love to give the Lord. It's a portion of what he gave back to us. Sister Carol Gilliard has left her, her ties as well as her assessment. And she's here with us this morning. Sister Taylor, she went on uh, vacation. She left her ties as well. Amen. 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 So to God be the glory for the good and great things he has done. Uh, I'm going to ask the right to his manning the door today. Amen. Sister Maxine finished passing out the envelopes. We're going to bring the baskets forward. Amen. Uh, yeah. Amen.
be your hit from me. Amen. Amen. So let's give the Lord a hand of praise. Amen.
Because why? It lifts us. We do the, we cross our fingers and we hope God will bless us. We cross our fingers and say, Lord, I hope you hear my prayers. So we cross our fingers and say, Well, I don't know how it's going to turn up, but I hope. This is the English definition. But my brothers and sisters, biblical hope comes from the Hebrew word tabak. And if you didn't know, I am Hebrew, and I'm glad to be in a Baptist church. Amen. Hallelujah. So tefah means it is knowing for a fact that a desired outcome will happen. That's a lot different from I think it might happen. I'm not sure, but I'm hoping I'm, you know, I'm praying. You know, I'm down on my knees. No, when you have biblical hope, when you have tefah, that means that you know that you know without a shadow of a gun. Abraham walked in 
This is Matthew 19 and 26. With man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Hallelujah. Point two. Can the church 
just say it then. Amen, amen. 
May we all please stand for God's written word. A word is coming from Colossians chapter 1, verses 21 through 23. That's Colossians chapter 1, verses 21 through 23. And it thusly reads, And you, who once were alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, Yet now he is reconciled in the body of his flesh through the death presented you holy and blameless and above reproach in his spirit. If indeed you continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast, and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard, which was preached to every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, became a minister. This completes the reading of the word. You may now have your seats. Thank <laughs> you. 
Actually dying for you. Yeah. Christ brought you over to God's side. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And put your lives together whole and holy yeah. in his presence. Yeah. And stop right there. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to tell you, I couldn't get past the first sentence. It says this. Listen to what happened. It says, you yourself Come on. are a case study of what he does. Right. Oh, oh, oh. Like Just back up and talk about on this day. Uh, and it's going to be our theme this summer. Just hope. Almost the rest of you. We need hope. People are yeah. feeling so hopeless. Yeah. But I want you to think from the thought, holding on to the hope in uncertain times. All right? yeah. Holding on to hope in uncertain times. Yeah. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Father, we give glory and thanks to you. Father God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for my beloved, beloved partner uh, in this proclamation hour, uh, Sister Shefton, I thank you for all under the sound of my voice, down at the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord. Our rock and our redeemer, in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. One of the things, and I'm an avid reader, I don't usually read novels, uh, but a great temptation of mine when I do read a novel is to peek ahead. To the end. <laughs> oh my, oh my. Some books are more tempting than others. Yeah. Well, and so I was listening to Sister Oprah Winfrey. Well, and she recognized, or I should say, recommended a book. I said I was listening to Oprah. Amen. Y'all yeah. know Oprah, right? Yeah. Yeah. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, then Oprah. Right? Yeah. So Oprah said, "Read it." I, I said, "Let me, let me read it." And so earlier this year, she suggested. People read A Covenant of Water by Dr. Abraham Verhees. And it's been making the book group circuits uh, around the country. And I can see why. It's the kind of book that you really can't put down. The story is about a South Indian family suffering from a very serious curse during its search for answers 
to the family, the family secrets, I should tell you. Family secrets are revealed that bond them together, but then family secrets are revealed that tore or tears the family apart. Amen. Well, let me tell you, the book is about 700 pages, so I couldn't really wait that long. I must admit, partway through the book, I just had to know how the family was going to make it out. And so I flipped to the final pages to see what happened. Don't worry, I won't spoil it for you in case you want to read it. My point is, knowing the ending helped ease me through the tension. It was the tension that was killing me, I must say. I just had to know the end. And once I knew then, I could read on in confidence. Ah, too bad we can't do that in life. When tension is just too much, wouldn't you like to know how everything so many questions, huh? Will I live again after Mr. Wright has walked out? How will my friends' uh, disease, how will their cancer diagnosis turn out? Will I have enough money to live the rest of my life? Well, when faced with an environmental catastrophe like the one we had uh, this past week, huh? Air quality, one I never thought we would come across. I'm sure you are wondering how things will end up. All right. We don't know. We can't gaze into a crystal ball and predict what tomorrow will be. Uh, we can't flip ahead to the final chapter and read the outcome in advance. But let me tell you something. We're not alone, huh? We're not alone in those feelings. There's a story in the old for war. And Saul doesn't know what to do. In his desperation, he consults the witch of Endor. He wants to know what the future holds. And so he has her summon up huh, the dead spirits of Samuel. The prophet Samuel. Samuel shows up, but he doesn't give Saul the answer he was looking for. Saul wanted to know how his situation was going to turn out. There's something about not knowing. About living in uncertainty. We yearn for clarity. huh? We want a guarantee in this life. But that's not the way life works. Is it? Life comes to us one day at a time. How tomorrow unfolds remains a mystery. And that uncertainty comes with a feeling of vulnerability, if you will. We want to be in control. We want to chart our course and be sure of our destination. To that end, we do all we can to assure our future. Uh, so we become health conscious. Come on, come on. Ah, uh, we, we, we create a 401k. Uh, we put money away for rainy day. But try as we might, we cannot completely control our future destiny. So how do we find hope in the midst of so much uncertainty? Uh, St. Paul was no stranger to uncertainty. This morning we hear passage from his letter to the Christians living in Colossae, a small city located on the Lycus River in the present-day Turkey. Paul wrote this letter while in prison in Rome. Talk about uncertainty. How would his situation turn out? Paul had no idea how long he had to stay in prison. And he had no guarantee of his outcome. Would he be released a free man? Would he be executed? Would he be locked up and forgotten and eventually die in a dungeon? There were no answers and no certainty. Paul says... And nevertheless, in so many words, and I'm going to give it to you my way that we always got to finish what we start. Yeah. Right? He says the hope of the gospel is what carries us. What is this hope of the gospel that fills us and drives us forward at all costs? Huh? Dare we hope to make it all the way to eternity? The answer is yes, we do dare. Because the hope of the gospel is this. Christ is our hope. Yeah. Because of our hope in Christ, God can do 
a lot of things. Yes. 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 I'm going to give you a few things. I'm going to give you a few things to help you out and give you some hope in this uncertainty right. of times that we live in. And then we're going to go downstairs and cut the cake. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. The first thing I want us all to know, because I got a lot of text messages, is that they said this. God handles your concern. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, he knows that Satan is out to defeat his yes, plan for you, but God can handle it. The psalmist David was saying, rest in the Lord and wait patiently on him. Because he knew that there is no power on earth that can break the promise of God. <laughs> Satan does not have the power to denounce or destroy or derail your blessings. Huh? The frustration and worries that abound in every believer's life is no match for the hope of the gospel. <laughs> nothing is too hard for God. Yes, sir. Because nothing can dethrone the Son of God. If we have hope in Christ, nothing is able to dampen our spirit, burn our back, or confuse our thoughts, or destroy our faith. Yes, sir. Our misfortunes need not scare us. Yes, Trouble. Need not torment us. Yes. Sorrows need not terrify us. Yes. Disappointment need not provoke us. Yes. And burdens need not restrain us. Yes. We live above the freight because we live with the hope that God can handle everything that comes our way. Yes. Uh, we have yes. the peace of God, Lord. which passes all our sadness. To keep our hearts and minds through Christ yes, Jesus. Yes. We have hope through Christ Jesus. In the second letter to the Corinthians, the Apostle Paul wrote about the troubles in his ministry, and I read it from the Living Bible. For clarity, Paul said, We are in deep trouble for bringing you God's comfort and salvation. But in our trouble, God has comforted us in this too to help you, to show you from our personal experience how God will tenderly comfort you. When you undergo these same sufferings, he will give you the strength to endure. Right. Somebody needs to hear that. He's going to give you the strength to endure. What concerns you this morning? Is it the air quality? What concerns you this morning? Is it your health? What concerns you? Is it your grown children? Tell me what concerns you. He'll tell you he'll give you the strength to endure it all. Our hope in Christ gives us the strength to endure. He says we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. Come on. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Come on. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Yeah. Cast down, but not destroyed. Even if our outward man perishes, Paul writes inwardly, we are renewed day by day. Yeah. What does that mean? It means this old body allows going to decay. It ain't gonna look like it did 30 years ago. So he said, if you check me out on the inside, there's nothing that this world can bring against me that's gonna turn my back on my God. I don't care what I look like on the outside, I don't care what I walk like on the inside. I'm sure of what I'm sure of. I know whose I am and I know who I am. Because uh, a non believer. That sounds naive. But to those of us who have a track record with God and have tasted the goodness of God and have been strengthened by His Spirit within, this is your chance. Oh, I should say to shout hallelujah. <laughs> uh, uh, I said He carried you through deep, deep sorrow. Oh, when I think about my life, I can say hallelujah. He resolved your long lasting track. I don't know about you, but I've been in some trials and I can say hallelujah. He erased your painstaking problems. Hallelujah. He removed your backbreaking burdens. Hallelujah. He placed our faith in God and he has not failed us yet. I will say hallelujah. Uh, so I'm here to tell you, I don't know what your concerns are. But uh, the God I know, the God I live for is so big. Yeah. Uh, he can handle even your little concern. Thank you. But then there's something else now. Yeah. We also know that God handles what? Our care. Don't ever forget that. Yeah. Admit it, we spend a lot of time worrying about the essentials in life. Yeah. The paycheck that lands in our bank account is spent before we receive it. 
Yeah. Rent has to be electric bill, it has to be paid, the water bill, the phone bill, bills, bills, bills. Some of them are essential, and some of them we create ourselves. God knows what you need, when you need it, and he'll take care of that part. Your wants are another story now. I can't stand up here without being honest. Your wants are another story. When your wants exceed your needs, you may be squandering God's blessings. I'm here to tell you, He gives you enough to handle your needs now. Your wants are something. I know you want a pair of shoes to match every outfit, but that's, 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 that's different. Ah, that's it. God does provide. While we're trusting in the word of God and yielding to the spirit of God, the Lord is providing for your daily needs according what? To his riches and glory. It doesn't matter if you're young or old, if you're black or white. God does not segregate his blessing. It doesn't matter if we're highly educated or if we lack education. God provides the care we need to, to sustain us because he meets our needs. Huh? Not through knowledge, but according to our faith. I'm always, I always kind of got set people in front of me, huh? When they, when they come to me and, and they tell me about their lives, well, at the same time, I'm trying to kind of read through and say, hmm, let me evaluate right. the faith here. Because yeah. he gives you according right. to your faith. Things will happen according to your faith. See, if you tell me you can, I, I, I say you can. But if you tell me you can, I say you probably can. Whatever you say, I, I can almost agree with you. All right. All right. All right. Ain't no need of me believing for you and you don't believe for yourself. I'm here to tell you God provides the care we need to sustain us because he meets our needs. Huh? God knows what we need even before we ask him. Even in the sermon on the mount, Jesus explained what it means to entrust your care to the Father. He says, take no thought for your life. Saying, what shall I eat or what shall I drink? Because God knows you have a need. Huh? He knows you need all these things. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now, Jesus taught us to seek ye the first, the kingdom of God, yeah. and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added. Yeah. In other words, he says, if you learn to prioritize me, come on, man. you learn to put it all over the bed and just seek me with all of your might. He says, I got you covered. See, I know as long as I put God first, I'm going to always have enough food in the cup. As long as I put God first, I'm always have a roof over my head. As long as I put God first, I'm everything that I need. Anything else is just extra. So we have hope in Christ that God will handle our concerns and we have hope that he will provide for our children. But then lastly, and then we're going we're gonna to go downstairs. Uh, finally, we have hope that God will give us our crown. Can't let you out of here without that. And it's a crown worth hoping for because it's an eternal crown. The Apostle James calls it a crown of life. He says, blessed is the man that endures temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. The Apostle Paul calls this crown of life an incorruptible crown. In other words, it is everlasting. Those who put their hope in the gospel will enjoy everlasting life. The crown has other attributes. Paul reminds Timothy that it's a crown of righteousness. He says, henceforth there is made up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. Not only me, but to all of them that love his appearance. Uh, but I couldn't stop there. The Lord wants something else to mind. Peter says, he describes this crown as a crown of glory. Yes. He writes, and when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that faileth not. But there is, or here is, one more attribute of your crown. It's your crown of rejoicing that you have through your own personal testimony. Yeah. Uh, 
let so many to inherit it. And like I says, uh, uh, I want to go back to my text. And I said, I couldn't let you. I couldn't let go. It says, you yourself are a case study of what he does. And I know that. All I see is case studies. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, you know, off the back track. Yes. It's one custom made, huh, for your daughter. Yes. 
Thank you for being so kind. Thank you for being so, so merciful. Lord, thank you for looking after a little something like me. Thank you for looking after Father God. So many of my brothers and sisters under the sound of my voice. So Father God, as we come to you with bowed heads and our hearts, Lord, thank you for the hand that's on my 